You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weird Science DC Comics podcast, where I'm going to be giving you a bit of a clip show this week, because if you're not aware, this week was an annuals week at DC Comics. And if you're also not aware, annuals weeks mean that our DC Comics and all of our comics podcasts are Patreon only that week, which means we have no limitations no over limitations. there. And usually we end up talking about this, but I thought this time I'll end up giving you a little sample of what we did talk about. And we talked about a bunch of big books. But before I go into that, let me remind everybody to listen to the whole podcast, which is about two and a half to three hours, I believe. You go over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash weird science and when you sign up you can sign up for as little as a dollar a month to listen to this week's podcast also then we'll be able to hear early access to the dc comics podcast each and every week but as you go up more and more levels you get more and more shows including our weekly spotlight two books picked by the badass this is the get fresh crew uh -uh, that we talk about all the time at the beginning of the podcast but again this week's show, Patreon only, but I thought I'll give you a sample, a little taste of some clips here, a clip show of what we did end up talking about. First off, we talked about Shadow War Omega number one and the idea that since the big reveal of Geoforce being the big bad, being the fake Deathstroke, really didn't feel like that much of a twist or a surprise. We were worried about what we might get or not get. In this final issue, also tangled in with that is the idea that me and Eric have had problems with Joshua Williamson and ending certain stories. So we were worried, as you will hear in this clip, people were worried that Joshua Williamson can't finish a story. And yeah, he kind of did it again. It didn't feel like the explanations warranted the story before. It seemed like everything was based on that cliffhanger surprise twist. Oh my god, Geoforce? Oh, we already knew that. Yeah, we knew that, so let's see the cleverness. All right, bring it to me, Brion. He did not bring it to me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't bring it. He didn't bring shit to you. Now, besides Brion not bringing much to Eric, we did like a lot of the stuff in the issue. We ended up enjoying Damien and more of his redemption story and him trying to bond with Talia, get that family deal going. And we did like some of the things that it sets up going forward, though. We had a lot of fun with the idea of Deathstroke going in that really wonky Lazarus pit and then coming out even more crazed than when he went in. I actually giggled at the, the society here where they throw him in. They're like, this is what we do. Throw him in like, shit's supposed to go like that. They're like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, this doesn't look right. <laughs> it's so weird, though, because it almost feels like Joshua Williamson's actually talking to our podcast with the stuff that we bring up and just like, and then it's kind of really quietly and small in a small way kind of like dealt with where it's like, we have Deathstroke's body. The Secret Society throw him in a Lazarus like, How'd you know about this place? When you're in the League of Shadows, part of the gig is to protect these pits. Once they found out I worked with Slade, they tried to kill me, so screw them. And that's Raptor doing with the idea that we had to throw out this whole thing. It was like, hey, he was part of the like the League of Shadows ever since like the League of Lazarus tournament, and then he's part of the Secret Society, and Angel Breaker's trying to f*** his face up. What's going on right now? Yeah, shit's going wrong in this pit. Well, it turns black. <laughs> he comes out of this. We are Deathstroke. He doesn't say that. Hey! Why didn't his eye heal? Like, they just have to throw that out there so he can keep the classic Deathstroke. <laughs> Why would that be the first thing that you'd notice or think? Because it, it regenerates your body. His eye, it, it hasn't healed. And he's just covered in goop. And you're like, yep, you're right. I guess that it's doing something different. So, yeah, Deathstroke's back. He wants to kill everybody. Talia's going to jail. Batman and Robin are going off to be kind of a team until maybe the Batman versus Robin book coming up. But by the end, I said we liked it enough. Maybe we just want it a little more. This is Eric talking at the end of what his overall thoughts were. Now, I won't give you the score that Eric gives or my final thoughts. You'll have to go over to the Patreon and listen to that. But here is Eric giving his thoughts of 
the Shadow War Omega. Besides for the epilogue, you know, Howard Porter backup art, I like the look of this book throughout and stuff like that. It's just that once you get the reveal of Geoforce at the end of the previous issue, there's nothing left to really do here except for just take Geoforce down and just get us back to some kind of square one that we were at the beginning of the storyline, except for bringing Rachel Go to Life. So there's not a lot here for me, and the explanations that I was looking to have weren't really done very well either. It's just kind of like passing mentions here and there and then quickly move on because as soon as you take a minute to think about it, you realize none of this makes any sense. I still had fun with this overall. It's just not the shadow war of many events that I needed it to be. Oh, I wonder what his score was going to be. But we end up continuing with Batman Annual, which is an Ed Brisson Batman Incorporated story. And we start with Eric contemplating or trying to figure out for himself why we need a Batman Incorporated team and what the story is coming out of Joshua Williamson's Batman run with Lex Luthor trying to make his own little Batman Incorporated. The idea is like, oh, here's that Batman, like you know, Lex Luthor's Batman in character that went bad, Abyss, and we have to take him down. Now, he did that all over the world in different countries and stuff like that, so we got to go and round up those people and take them down too. I didn't like that story to begin with. And now when you tell me, because that was built on a foundation of sand to begin with, because the idea is like, shit. as soon as Batman years ago, and I say years, because it's always going to be kind of no weird how you deal with comic book time and real time and stuff like that. But we have a lot of time in between Batman and when that got started to when it got shut down. And now bringing it back again, it's like Lex Luthor saw Batman putting together a Batman ink. And he said, F- that noise. And he put together his own Batman ink. And then it went bad. And then he said, F- that noise. And went back to doing what he was doing and forgot about it. But now he's back. But he's not really. The end. (laughs) What? (laughs) All right. This this is a spinoff of a real shitty story. Did he have this going on? on The Abyss freaking ooze to some dude who just wears a wolf mask? uh, You said Abyss didn't make any sense. We really barely had an ending to it. It was a fail. And I do think that maybe what happened, that might have been a a longer story. Did Lex Luthor set up his own Batman anti-gray wolf bat suit like he did with his Abyss suit? You see in the back uh, then, and we're going to keep getting this with Ghostmaker and Batman. Well, they pals, Jim. They're spitballing here. I ended up, it's funny because I have just recently been watching the History Channel documentary, The Food That Built America. Half the scenes looks like this. People are doing things like, you know what I think? We should deliver pizzas. That's just basically what you get here. It's like, I think that we should franchise. Really? What do you want the McBat? I think I do. You want to be in there? No. Okay, I'll ask you later. And then they just kind of go through it. And you have to set up that idea that Ghostmaker, he don't like the idea, but he'll do it now. And when you get to it, I still think that Ghostmaker, I think that this ends up going completely wrong. Now, while we both kind of agreed that the sketchy beginnings of this new book, and I'm saying new book because if you're not aware, in October, we will have this Batman Incorporated be a series. Eric ended up saying that he was intrigued by this book, by this annual, and will be excited about that Batman Inc. story come October. Not for me as much because I wanted more of this team. I wanted more character work by Ed Brisson to try to give me an idea of the team. There's some new characters on the team, and even the traditional ones aren't as well known. And maybe it's one of those things that you have to convince people, not just what or who the characters are, but why I need to go forward and get excited about it. Now, one of the characters that has continued on and entered into this with Ghostmaker is also Clown Hunter. Clown Hunter, I'm not a big fan of. Eric's more of a fan, but both me and Eric were laughing about the idea of what is Clown Hunter's job now? I mean, you end up not really having the Jokers running around. So how is he going to adjust? And we're afraid he may not be able to adjust, as you'll hear in this clip you off in any nearest alley in Gotham and you can chase over those rejects of, of the Joker, you're like, Yeah, this character's kind of silly now. It doesn't really work. Until he's needed again. I'm not a sidekick. Yeah, you're not good enough to be a sidekick. Well, your ass is walking down the street, and all of a sudden the gang of clowns comes out because the Joker's up to his shenanigans. You're going to be happy that Val's out there doing his thing. He's really big on, like, Halloween. Hangs around, like, kids' birthday parties. Anywhere there might be a clown. 
I'm telling you, he's just going to kill innocent people. Just wait until that new Pennywise premiere. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, he's outside of that. Is that band Pennywise still perform? Insane Clown Pussy. They better retire. Oh, shit. <laughs> and for many reasons. Yeah, really. You don't know, hear many people say like, hey, stop clowning around. Like, if they, you'd be <laughs> in big trouble. I mean, you'd be dead. You know, I'm worried about old Clown Hunter, but... Overall, I was a little disappointed. I said I was a little disappointed with not getting enough of the team because me and Eric both agreed the story wasn't that great. You end up having Ghostmaker and Batman Incorporated go into this town, try to save it from crazy stuff. Having Lazarus resin being mentioned felt very off. And then at the end, they leave. They take Gray Wolf, the Batman of this town. You know, made by Lex Luthor, but at this point, they're going to accept them onto Batman Inc. But then they leave the antidote for the big problem with the guy that seemed to have caused all the problem. And I think they were way too trusting and will probably end up regretting that decision when this whole town goes down, which is what we talk about in this final clip from the Batman annual. But the idea where you have the guy who was behind this entire thing. Keeping his mouth shut with this group full of survivors stuff about, man, I was just trying to help people. I don't know <laughs> what happened over here. That gray wolf, he went crazy. Later on, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. It was my bad. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you mean you're the guy who did all this? Well, we're going to leave you with the antidote. Make sure you read the instructions. This guy is selling this shit. He's like, these people are going to have to do really bad shit to get this antidote. You better give it to them. Read the instructions. I will. Next up was Action Comics Annual, an issue that was written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, who's doing the Action Comics book, but also joined by Cy Spurrier in a story that ended up jumping back and forth between a, a young Clark Kent and a young Mongol, showing the similarities and differences of them growing up in poignant parts of their life, kind of. You end up having in the Clark Kent story the idea that Ma Kent back in the day had cancer, and it also involves some bullying and things like that with a kid named Caleb. We thought that the cancer felt more like a prop, and it really didn't play out well and was an odd addition to the flashback deal, while the Mongol stuff, we really thought was cool, may not be fully necessary, but a lot of times annuals aren't. Annuals are usually, you know, little extra info and things like that. So I think that part was well served for people who do like the War World saga going on in Philip Kennedy Johnson's Action Comics right now. But one of the things that we had fun with was this idea of this kid who was a bully to Clark, Caleb, who ended up, it's it's not a great story in the idea that this kid seemed to be suffering a lot of abuse at the hand of his father, a drunk he was, and then ends up being able to turn it around with the kind of niceties and, you know, Clark being a great kid. That's what you get out of this. It's the standard, oh my God, look how great Clark is. But he ends up inspiring Caleb to go on maybe to bigger and better things. But yet when we see him later, me and Eric thought, that he was a little bit sus, as we talk about here. But then Clark, as a child, inspired him to be better. So when he growed up, he then helped other children. Thank you, Caleb. <laughs> I'm telling you, Caleb, at the end, he looks sus as shit. He looks like he is up to no damn good. I don't good. think that he's going to hurt any kids or has any intention to hurt kids, but he might have drugs on him. He's walking by a school waving. Looks like he might have sandals or Crocs. I don't trust them. As he's walking around... You notice that every bit of authority is watching his ass because I know he is a sus character. Yeah, police are looking. I think that that ball has drugs in it. I, I'm, I think it's mostly everybody's looking at him because I want to assume like right now it's summertime and they see him with long hair and a beanie on and a jacket. Like you hiding track marks? What's wrong with you, junkie? Exactly. And he's hanging around a youth center with the ba the ball. Hey, kids, you like the balls? And then you like, hey, you don't have pants on, pal. Uh, he looks like he's got Crocs on the one. Do you wear Crocs? Uh, in the basement, I do. But I don't okay. wear them outside. I do not wear the Doc shoes outside. I call them Doc shoes. <laughs> I'm fancy. Oh, but yeah. And, and really, you shouldn't wear Crocs at any point. They're not good for your arches. I have flat feet, so they hurt like hell. But also, if you get near anything that wet, like maybe, I don't know, there's like urine or something on the floor. You'll slip on that air. Clean up your goddamn I mean, floor. I'm telling you, you don't want to do that. See, that clip both had, you know, the idea that maybe the shady Caleb is up to no good, but also advice on Crocs. 
and maybe cleaning your basement floor. But as we ended up discussing the issue, we came down, as I said earlier, with the kind of the final deal of liking what Philip Kennedy Johnson did with Mongol might not be necessary, but was good for people who were enjoying action comics up to this point and want to know a little more about Mongol, who has been elevated since Philip Kennedy Johnson has been writing this action comics run. And here is Eric with his final thoughts on the annual. You are caring about the current war world story and where this Mongol and the new war zone stuff came and the culture of the war zones for how Philip Kennedy Johnson sees it because this is the new thing. You've never had this before and now you do. But the problem with that is even it's what you'd expect anyway from the idea of, oh, we've been exiled. There's this like, there's a scavenger freaking tribe out here, former exiles, and the Mongol has to fight them, and he becomes the toughest. He might as well be Conan pushing the damn wheel at the beginning of Conan the Barbarian, and him becoming the mightiest to one day. He'll become a king by his own hand. All this just was a little forced, but the Mongol stuff, like you said, it's more important. And it should have been the entire issue in my mind, even if a lot of what we have, which I've done, I like the Mongol stuff. A lot of it is just over the top alien names and stuff like that that you have to keep throwing out there. But it should have been the entire issue because nothing in the Clark Kent section is telling you anything more about what you already know that Superman's a good guy. Oh, my. And let me remind everybody, if you want to hear our scores for all of these books and also all the other fun stuff that we ended up talking about, please go over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash weird science for as little as a dollar a month. I didn't even mention it at the beginning as well. You won't be charged right away. So if you end up any level that you would sign up for, you get all of June to figure out if you like what we do. And we have a lot more podcasts than just our main show or just this Patreon only show this week. So you'd have an opportunity to listen to everything. And then by the end of June, if you don't like what you hear, you end up quitting. You'll never be charged. So you can listen to weeks and weeks and shows and shows a plethora of times 10 times 50. I don't know the math, but there are a ton of shows out there. And it is one of those free trial type of deals, really. But we end up moving on. And the final book that we talked about was the Justice League Road to Dark Crisis. Now, going into this event, I had seen a lot of people pish poshing it on Twitter and all social media saying that, oh, really, the Justice League dead? Yeah, I don't believe you. Why should I get involved with this? So I was really hoping that this Road to Dark Crisis book would get everybody, including myself, hyped. I'm still looking forward to Dark Crisis. But this Road to Dark Crisis just didn't do it for me. In a way, I thought it was a little bit boring. I don't know that we were seeing the big things going into Dark Crisis, but also you end up having this weird vibe of, hey, everybody dies and then comes back, big whoop, we're not concerned. And that felt like a weird thing to go into the event saying, which is what I talk about in this clip. Yeah, That's the big joke when the just, hey, just League's the death of Justice League. And everybody's like, I'm not buying that. That's bullshit. They're going to come back. And trying to play that in a way of like, well, hey, guys, we know the joke. You know, it, it, we understand. So you're playing that angle. I would have rather of them try to figure out a way that maybe and you're going to have to suspend disbelief all around. Batman is not going to die and be dead forever. But I want in the book for me to think, well, like just that little tip, of, like, ooh, like they just said something that might be, um, you know, let's see what happens. And even then. Just think of the landscape of the books. They didn't even want to commit to then have no Batman book while he's dead. So it, it already feels silly. It already goes. And then to have it in there of everybody just convincing and then acting like Wally's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sad about Barry, but yeah, whatever. Let's go and smile. And he goes off and just feels weird. And we're going to start Dark Crisis next week. I certainly hope that there's more weight to it than what we get here while we eat, you know, beef bouillonnaise with ketchup on it and Gross. talk about how eh, everybody dies. Now, we did talk about this Road to Dark Crisis for quite some time. You ended up having a bunch of stories, an anthology issue. So I'm just going to add a couple things in here, a couple clips of things that we laughed about. One of them being in the Flash story, Wally ends up going to the Flash Museum and outside, they have a giant statue of Barry Allen Flash that says on it, Barry Allen, which drove Eric nuts before we even started recording. 
He was so upset about the idea that they doxed Barry Allen. They revealed his identity in a universe and an issue that they kept saying, ah, he'll be back. Ah, he didn't really die. We'll find out. So what is going on there? Is that a little tell maybe that he won't be back? I don't know. I think it was a slip up, but we talk about it here. I'm going to go see this full out doxed Barry Allen statue. Bothered me so much. He takes his mask off. Somebody takes a picture or something. Ain't nobody around. I'm telling you, who knows? I mean, you're ending up, you're downtown going there at the Flash Museum. Every time I see that place is hopping. I already said it. I thought it was a weird play that DC itself and Joshua Williamson kind of getting all this stuff together going to that dark crisis where they end up kind of in story saying, eh, the Justice League's not dead. Oh, my goodness, that doesn't matter. We'll see how much it matters, and it doesn't. When we hit dark crisis, I think it will matter a little more. It's just an odd way to get towards that story and trying to maybe hype people up for it. I am going to play two clips simultaneously or in a row here to end this. One is kind of just poking fun at the idea of if death matters or not. When we talk about the Hal Jordan, Jackson Hyde, Aquaman story. And then I will go right to Eric's final thoughts on this whole road to dark crisis. You end up having Hal and he's like, well, where's Arthur? I need Arthur. Oh, you know, Aquaman, he's dead. Wait a minute. Let's get this straight. Are you talking Mara killing him dead or after? Oh, after. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. He died like three weeks ago. He'll be back. I mean, the idea that Aquaman's died. Even in the Aquaman book, we're just talking about how he just was dead and came back. Exactly. That's all they were talking about. I like a lot of what we're doing here. It's just not getting the hype to the Road of Dark Crisis that you need. All the art looks great. I like the characters involved. They are in a been there, done that situation, which you'd expect at this point in time because they're all still shocked and crazy. Our heroes apparently cannot learn from the mistakes. I, the thing that I do like about this is all of the villains coming out of the woodwork because of this. That's what gets me excited. That always gets me excited. All right. And that's the end of the Weird Science Clip Show, our first clip show that we've ever done. Something that I was thinking about doing a couple of times, ended up doing it. It shocked me how long it did take me to do it. But hopefully this inspires people to go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash weird science, where you can hear the entire episode. Uh, and all the stuff, including the Scores Reach book as well, all of that stuff and a lot of fun that we had doing our reviewerings and the skewerings, as Eric says at the beginning of every show. But with that, please go over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash weird science, where you can listen to the entire show for a dollar, dollar make you holler. And that is the lowest level there as you go up each level. You do end up having more and more podcasts, including a new 52 review podcast, a comic book crisis podcast, a Walking Dead comics reading club, back issues podcast, Silver Age comics podcast. There's so many podcasts. There is literally a plethora of times 10. Go over to patreon.com slash weird science. I already mentioned that you won't be charged right away. You can go all the way up to the highest level which is the badass levels there where then you get to pick what books we do on our weekly spotlights, both Marvel and DC and all the other shows as well. Plus you can also then get your name probably flubbed by me at the beginning of each podcast. That's always fun. Also, I didn't mention we're starting each month. We have a book of the month podcast. We're starting June's obviously June just started and it looks like we're going to be doing Descender by Jeff Lemire. So that's pretty cool too. If you are into that but it's not quite over i'm gonna put one last clip here as we roll out here this is me and eric talking at the end of the podcast now if you're not aware and you wouldn't be if you're listening to this because we talked about it on the patreon only podcast eric has covid he ended up getting covid this week i ended up having two root canals and my computer caught on fire so i had to go and get a new computer which anytime I leave the house leads to a lot of problems for me. There's more problems than what you're going to hear. I ended up having so many problems just going to get a computer, but they all kind of culminated in what I think was an old lady at McDonald's trying to proposition me. I'm not sure. Eric says I'm insane, but here is us discussing maybe why things go wrong for me, but also this lady 
getting a little, little too personal with me. But thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show. And I hope that you go over and check out the Patreon one last time. Patreon.com slash weird science. See you later. I end up getting a meal there, but I use the app and they bring it out. And this lady was like rubbing my arm. And and she's like, oh, is this yours? She's like, is this yours? And I said, yeah. And she's just an old lady. And she's like, oh, I was worried that the car would be somewhere else. But it's you. And she's like rubbing my shoulder and my arm. I'm like, hmm. And then she goes, oh. I love that sweat. Of course, I'm wearing my classy sweatshirt hoodie and, and my shorts and my hat, but I had my Eagles hoodie on. She's like, oh, I love the Eagles. You an Eagles fan. I'm like, I don't know if I'm being propositioned. <laughs> Like, I gotta get the hell out Proposition. Of here. <laughs> She's like rubbing She's my She's an old lady who works at McDonald's. Bring your friend. I'm you trying to you. have sex with me, exactly. old lady. I'm like, what are you doing? Lady? I ain't got money for your prostitute shenanigans. And she's like, Yeah, I'm from Philadelphia. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I never have these problems when I, I go don't places. I what happens. I think that I, I honestly, don't know. I don't go many places, but it still never happens. I, I don't want to. I don't want to make fun of myself or anything. <laughs> Maybe it is because I'm a, a smaller guy. And Very approachable, like a I child. Don't know. I think that's what it might be. Hey, little guy, you lost. And that's the thing. <laughs> you, you know, you your, know your mom and dad is? You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.